once again from a secret undisclosed location somewhere in the bowels of historic downtown St. John's Newfoundland comes in the Library of Graphic Literature with your host, him, Wallace Ryan. And before we do anything, hmm, I don't hear any beeping. <laughs> yes, folks, at last, the battery has been replaced in uh, said uh, smoke detector, so this week we won't be bothered by that incessant beep, 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 beep. In the meantime, oh, where's my blade? Where's my blade? Hang on a second, folks. <laughs> In all my excitement over the uh, new batteries and all that, I'd forgotten, uh, oh, my T2. Oh, oh, hang on a sec. Let's see. Okay, there. Let's get ready here. Okay, a few cool books here uh, this week. Good cup of tea here. Now, oh, before I start anything this week, I'm going to actually have a little chat, and this is kind of like a, a letter, a verbal or video letter to uh, Dan DiDio there at, uh, at DC Comics. Uh, there's been a lot of bad rumors going around this week that they'll, they're talking, that they've cancelled uh, a couple of the Bronze Age omnibuses and stuff like that, and... Uh, and there are a lot of people, including myself, who are kind of upset about the whole thing. Uh, it's one thing sort of to cut back and change formats and all that, but really not in midstream. You're us who've been buying your your beautiful uh, omnibuses and all that. Um, don't like it for one thing, <laughs> and um, and especially I got to say, especially with the House of Secrets uh, omnibus, uh, very ticked off about that. And I know some other people who bought it who are also uh, kind of ticked off because you only had another volume to go. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, you've heard how angry uh, you've made your loyal DC uh, book buyers out here. And uh, you'll go back and you'll actually will release it. Um, I mean, if you want to change formats, go ahead. But at least finish off what you're doing. Because there's not... I mean, look up there. I mean, got a beautiful line of... Uh, of these archives and then they just stop suddenly and then you're changing format I'll tell you one thing us book collectors who do buy books hate that so please uh, honor us with uh, with a little bit of attention and uh, bring back those uh, Bronze Age omnibuses especially the House of Secrets and the House of Mystery there's only one left in each of those so at the very least you got to do that and if you're going to do something from from now on do, do it from the, going forward don't do it with books that you've already solicited. That just really, really makes people angry. And and when you're putting out books too, you don't have to put out a, a, a soft cover or a hard cover for everything that you do. Because to be quite honest, you know some of the newer stuff may not be up to up to scratch. So you know why give it a book? Concentrate on some of your back catalog. A lot of good stuff there. Thank you for listening to me, Dan. Okay. So speaking of which, let's have a look at the. Bronze Age Batgirl. So we'll we'll give you first billing here, Dad. Like I say, myself and all of us other collectors who've been collecting these uh, omnibuses have been, you know, we've been enjoying and having a great time, and we're just so sad and or angry. Now, I mean, the rumors could not be, it could be untrue. I mean, it did come from Bleeding Cool, which to me sometimes I'm sort of a little bit suspect of. But what can you do? Anyway. Uh, Back to the Bronze Age Batgirl, we have, on art at least, from here, Jose Del Bo, Don Newton, Marshall Rogers, woo 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 woo, Leah Leis, Juan Ortiz, Bob Osner, Dick Gordana, Trevor Von Aden, Barry Kitson, and so on. So, I mean, you know, sort of a, a fun mixture of people there. The, uh, the one I'm most excited about, of course, is the, uh, is the Marshall Rogers stuff. Of course, I uh, I love Marshall Rogers. And let's see where where is Marshall? Because and I can remember actually by reading and buying some of these from the early Batman family. Ooh, what? some Don Heck too. But yeah, I had a lot of these when when I was growing up. Oh, maybe this is the no. Yeah, I think this is probably it here. 
almost like a, yeah, this is the uh, Marshall Rogers inked by Bob Wysick, I think. <laughs> he nailed it. Oh, actually, it's with, along with Tom Newton. So anyway, uh, for, for you Batgirl fans, check it out. Well, let's take a quick splurge through it. So that's one of my favorite tunes that are uh, artists right there earlier. Bit of Don Heck, a little bit of everyone here. And some stuff maybe not the greatest, but I mean still, there's a lot of cool stuff anyway. And like I say, for you Batgirl fans, why not? Wide range of, of art and art styles throughout. So yeah, Pick that up if you love it, or at least like it. So don't forget, Dan. I've spoken. And this week we have not not only one, but we have two graphic novels from uh, one of Canada's uh, best-known uh, writers, uh, Margaret Atwood. This one is done with Ken Stacy. Of the Canadian and, a, and, and a, a comic book legend and this one is art and adaptation Renee Note uh, who I'm not familiar with but I mean the the art itself looks pretty cool and I mean the story itself I mean these days who doesn't know about The Handmaid's Tale one of a, 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 a Canadian classic and uh, I'll give you I'll show you give you a quick show of it anyway There we go. Come on, come on. Her dystopian tale. And these days, especially down in the, the states, these uh, cloaks have become actually a bit of a, uh, a statement. So uh, if you want to see what the excitement is all about, have a read of this. Mar Margaret Atwood, nothing like her. Nothing like her me lads and of course this uh ken stacy one of uh one of my favorite comic book artists i uh, i loved his stuff way even way back as far as uh oh geez he uh, uh he'd done stuff with star reach and, and all kinds and all kinds of places so yeah check it out war bears i always liked his style he also went, I do believe he also went to the Ontario College of Art. Same place as, as I did. Well, yeah, and this looks interesting enough. So I'm going uh, to give this a read. Who knows what it's like, but, you know, it's Margaret Atwood, so I figure, hey, what can one lose? Nothing, nothing. Ah, let's take a break for some tea here. Mm, 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 mm. And a spin of the rack of the spinner rack. Whee! Love that sound. Uh, also this week from Dynamite comes Red Sonia. No, 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 no. This is the Ballad of the Red Goddess by Roy Thomas and Esteban Morato. Uh, one of my favorite artists. Uh, I loved his worn, his stuff for Warren growing up and. Uh, and he also did, uh, oh, he did that Atlantis Chronicles for DC. But he's best known for his work with the Warren magazines. And his stuff is just absolutely breathtaking. It's, it's, I mean, I get, every time I look at his art, it just, it just blows me away. <laughs> so, uh, check it out here. Now, this is all in black and white. But this guy, and I mean this guy could draw. Check that out. Look at that. I like the fact that it's basically black and white and red with the red being limited to uh, Red Sonia's hair. But yeah, for any of you who are fans of uh, Esteban, check this out. Oh, and a cool one. Uh, section back there lovely cover of course and of course uh, 
probably a decent script by Roy Thomas, but I find he's usually pretty good with his adaptations of stuff like that. And, uh, oh, yeah, not, not a lot this week, actually. Oh, and for you folks out there who were wondering about where uh, Nobody is in Control, the comic that myself and Paul Tucker uh, have done, and where it has gone to, it's it's still at the printers. We got word from uh, Black Mass that it's at the printers, and it's it's there were some slight delays, but it's almost ready. And the first issue has been sold out, so uh, like I say, going to second print. But as soon as I get a, a firm uh, confirmation on the when and the where, I'll be letting you know. Now, last and without doubt, not the least. Oh, oh, oh. Comes from uh, coming from the fine folks at IDW and the Library of American Comics. We have Donald Duck, the Complete Daily Newspaper of Comics, Volume 5, 1948 to 1950, by Al Taliaferro from the Disney Vaults. Um, I'm, I'm a big Disney fan, well, especially if I'm a big Duck fan too. Huge Duck fan. And so, uh, anything duck-related, whatever, I will pick up. Well, I'll pick up anything from Library of American Comics because, uh, out of the range of the camera there over there, I have a complete collection of the Library of American Comics. And now, it's a little bit more complete because I got the latest book from them. <laughs> it's kind of neat every time, when, when you fill out a collection like that, and then you turn around every time you add to that collection from a particular publisher or... For particular sets of books you're you're constantly you know you're constantly finishing that collecting again and it kind of feels neat kind of like the uh, I guess the uh, with Andy Sarah's really uh, uh, there's just that satisfaction and and every like I say every time they come out with one I get a little bit of satisfaction again out of it um, and I, as I've said many times uh, the Library of American Comics are without doubt the one of the premier, if not the premier, publisher of uh, of comic strips in uh, uh, in in North America. They do everything from a little Orphan Nanny to Dick Tracy. Uh, let's see what else over there. Steve Canyon, Skippy, uh, X Nine, Secret Agent. Uh, for better or for worse, uh, and a lot of, like I say, a lot of good stuff, and and they put out, they've been putting out actually a lot of these Disney books lately, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because Disney owns Marvel, but of course, this is something just not in Marvel's wheelhouse, so I like the fact that Disney's willing to, uh, to go over to someone else to, to get some of their properties done. It's strange, isn't it, not hearing that beep? And it was as I, oh, by the way, it was as I figured out, folks, it was the smoke detector upstairs, not the one on this floor. Now, without further ado, let's have a quick look at some of these uh, Donald Duck. This is uh, Talia Ferro, uh, who, who's actually style I kind of like. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. I love these books there. I guess a good good printing, good production, good production values. Check it out. Like I say, I'm a huge fan of well Donald Duck too. I love Donald Donald Duck comics. Big fan of course of uh, of anything like uh, uh, well all the stuff from Barks and from uh, Don Rosa and all that, and uh, and even this stuff. This is pretty good. Actually, yeah, I kind of I'll put it up with the, the and he is this guy is considered you know a, a decent duck artist. I like it. He got a nice definitely got a nice line to him. Without a doubt, pretty cool, eh? Okay. 
Now, is that... Oh, do I have a... I've got a few uh, books coming in now. I uh, managed to secure copies of uh, some of Mobius's other books, like his Fauna of Mars and uh, some other stuff. And uh, when they come through, I'll be sharing them. Um, another book I, I ordered, actually, this week... Uh, and it's not available through comic book stores, you have to go online. Uh, and this is one thing I like about, actually I do like about the, uh, uh, about, uh, you know, not only doing the show, but having the Facebook page, the, the Library of Graphic Literature Facebook page, is uh, I get a lot of suggestions and, and a lot of recommendations from the members about good comics to read and stuff like that. And this week's, uh, has to go to Chris Marshall, who, uh, recommended to me a comic called Scurry and I checked it out online and it just goes scurrycomic.com and it's a cool little talking animals comic about mice and uh, them existing in a world that seems to be bereft of humans. I'm not going to go into it too much but even as I started to read it I was like wow this is really cool and I got about 10 pages into it and it's just like okay enough is enough I'm gonna I gotta order these books so I got them on order and I'm going to read them when they come in. But it looks like a, like a great book, so I highly recommend it to, uh, to people out there. Like I say, I read a good bit of it, and it, it was absolutely delightful. Beautiful, nice mood to it. There was, was a quiet menace in the background, you know, even with the cute little animals and stuff like that. And, you know, a little sh shot of humor here and there. Uh, so, yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. So, that being it, um... Time to close it up. Okay, let's have one more spin of this. Isn't it beautiful though? Hey, have a no. Let's listen again. My God. What happened to that beeping? Anyway, I do apologize for, for, to, to you folks out there for taking so long to replace it, but a lot of times I'd get, get back here and it'd just be, after a long day, I'd be exhausted and be like, oh. Maybe it won't beep that much or whatever. Well, of course it would beep that much. So anyway, that problem has been taken care of. Thank you all for your patience, and I love you all dearly. And we'll see you same time, same bad channel next week here in the Library of Graphic Literature. Mm -hmm. Love you all. Let's boom to to get out of here. Gonna be a good week next week too, by the way. <gasps> Oh my God, look at that. This is the third biggest boom tube I've ever seen. Okay, love y'all. See ya. Ah!